God. Genesis, the third chapter. We're in a very timely series called In the Beginning. And uh, there is something that is so intriguing about studying God's intro, his, uh, uh, his introduction of himself. Pastor Etienne so masterfully laid out some things for us last week. We're so grateful for you. And uh, I suspect that we'll be here for a while. Some of the leaders are thinking that our series are too short in order to lay foundation. And so I think that we need to spend some time here in order to adequately pay attention to the texture of the word of God. If you haven't heard me say it before, I love God's word. And um, you can never exhaust the full wisdom that is in the word of God. Say amen. And uh, so we're going to Genesis chapter 3 today. And I'm going to be starting at verse 6. If you're saved, you should know this. Uh, but we're going to go through some principles today that's going to probably help you to know about what happens in the beginning. Genesis 3, uh, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Verse 11 is where we get our primary thought this morning. I'd like you to indulge me, if you will. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. Father, you're a much better preacher than I am. Help me with this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you just look at your neighbor and ask him one question very bluntly? Who told you that? Will you just... Oh, no, I don't, you're not convincing me. Will you just look at somebody and say, who told you that? Yeah. In diligent scriptural study, one of the things that you need to consider is that it is not all structured the same. And there are certain things, Prophet Stephanie, you look so beautiful today. So there are certain things that are uplifted and highlighted as we read and study the Bible. I hope that we are still in a generation that believes in reading the Bible. <laughs> You're quiet already. I just really do believe that you're not living your life on the motivational quotes of the day that comes to your text phone. I, I hope that you have a, a, a diet and I hope that you have an appetite for daily study, whether it's when you wake up or whether it's when you go to bed or whether it's on your lunch break. I am religious. I don't care. But you got to have a daily intake of the word of God. It's consistently transforming you, consistently training you, consistently changing you. Lift your hands and say the Bible and uh, the way the Bible is situated is you're going to have specifically in the book of Genesis you're going to have narratives now now many of you will not be as fortunate enough to be as famous enough to have a scandal out on you you won't ever know the privilege of that some of you won't be that famous but there's other people in the world that will ascend to that level of influence where they're going to have to suffer a narrative they're going to have to endure a narrative that they can or cannot contribute to, adjust, realign, and reaffirm because narratives exist around anything that has attention. There's a narrative. So the narrative means it's, it's narration. It's the conversation around the event. Now, the challenge with that, Munson, is that the event may be one thing and the narrative may be another. But in the Bible, you see narratives around lives, narratives around uh, from, from Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. There's a narrative. Around Noah, there's a narrative. There's a story. There's a perspective there's a view around who thinks they know what they know nothing about understood a narrative and so you have a narrative now in the book of Genesis and this is the initial narrative so this means that this is a story and this is an outline and this is a purview of something that's being explained by revelation by inspiration of the Holy Spirit say narrative say narrative uh, and then you have schematics I'll get there when I want to schematics so you've got a scheme it, it means that there's a plot 
and, and in every plot you've got characters you've got this figure that figure and they play roles I, I think that you should just know minor bunny trail you should know what role everybody plays in your life I'm not here to preach that but I think that if you're going to have a role in your life you need to know how the role is played and that's a part of the schematic your life has a schematic your uh, whether you're married or single or black or white or male or female there is a schematic a plot there is certain key figures if you want to understand the power of schematics Dre play chess because it teaches you the role and the, 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 the rule and the, the thought the intent on how something is to be won say schematics and then you got landscapes that has to do with environments, the, the backdrop of it. Because Adam's story would not be Adam's story if it were not in Eden. Adam's story would not have been Adam's story in Egypt or in Canaan or otherwise. So it also matters not just what exists but where it exists. Because it has to do with what God's intention is for the role that's about to be played out. Can I just encourage you real quick? Don't you ever again be ashamed of where you come from. It's a part of the backdrop backdrop it's just a stage it's just a stage it's just a reason that justifies or supports or highlights who God made you to be and what God made you to be the landscape and then you got the setting the setting the setting and uh, in, in Genesis you have several settings I love Pastor Kyle the way God regulates them planets he, he he creates two different lights and then he starts giving ordinances to planets and telling them that the, your only purpose sun and moon and star and Jupiter and Saturn your only purpose is signs and seasons you're not here for us to look at and 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 be reminded that I'm here you're here to help my people understand the benefit of the changing of a time and the changing of a moment as a matter of fact you're going to come up and go down to teach my people feasts and festivals I'm going to teach you how to remind my people of when it's time to party so the whole of the intergalactic the universal schematic of God was to remind the human race that everything is going to happen when God wants it to happen and you need to pay attention to that all right so scenarios scenarios there is a scenario all right so when we see for example uh, 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 when God is creating man and when we see for example that the scriptures are explicit about this one scientific reality yeah, there is no more scientifically accurate book of the Bible than the book of Genesis we just overlook the science because we think it's sacrilegious to do so but I think that there is science in the book of Genesis that does not defy God I think it actually is his language to give us a road map for how he did what he did and how what he did will not be reversed mm. it's the worship of science that is idolatrous but we're not mad at science it's one of God's love languages he says okay in order for you to know how big I am and how wise I am and how strong I am I'm going to give you as many formulas you can have all the arithmetic I'm going to give you codes and all of this whatever you need to think that you're like me I'm going to give you something to understand how I do what I do an explanation get guide to, to steward what I've done the, the scenarios so scenarios are like this you can have the same key figures and the same plot and the same schematic onto the same landscape and the scenario can be different. For example, you will have somebody that is an ally in one season and an adversary in the next. Yeah, you won't talk back. And in and, 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 and one season, it might be difficult to differentiate who is who and who and what is what. But when the scenarios change, God allows the opportunity for you to see what's changing in the schematic, in the narrative, in the landscape, in the setting, and on the scenario. Say, I hear yeah. Now, the, the, the book of Genesis also, I know you know this, but I've got to teach you the power of origins. That, uh, uh, that there is a such thing as sacred and valid origins to authenticate it you got to know the origin of it I'll repeat it to authenticate it to verify it to validate it you got to know the origin of it it's dangerous to know and to trust something that whose origin is questionable you've got to know where the thing came from you got to know who sent it why won't you talk back to me you can't just let stuff arrive in your life and arrive in your mind this is why your thought life is messed up is because you don't check where it came from where is this coming from this is why we think our feelings are facts we don't verify the origin i want to know who sent you lift your hands and say from whence do you come <laughs> hey, 
So the book of Genesis I do enjoy because it is a book of origins. It teaches us the originality, the origination, the, the beginning point of that. So this is the intro to uh, not just a pattern of God, the principles of God, but also the personhood of God. Pattern, principle, and personhood. Write that down, will you? Pattern, principle, and personhood. That means that as we're studying the book of Genesis, we're going to always see consistent pattern, consistent pattern and God is so God he never has to improve on his strategy I love him he's so wonderful that when he does it right he does it the first time and if and when there is an adjustment he already pre-calculated your word is life he already pre-calculated what measures would need to be taken so as to bring redemption's plan forward the manifestation of the Christ plan forward he already considered all of that so it's a it's, it's a book of pattern it's a book of principle it's a book of the personhood of gone the productive process of God is so interesting I'm getting to my text when I want to just chill the productive process of God is so rich that it takes particles that seem to have no relationship and no 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 continuity and no similitude no similarity and all God does is starts talking until things that were not together comes together I will repeat it these particles that are scattered everywhere plants and shrubs and herbs and waters and streams and for example I'll get there soon God told Noah it was going to rain nobody had heard it before because the Bible said that there was a mist that rose up from the ground. And it never came from the heaven because the firmament had not broke yet. It came from the earth to water everything that was there. So there was an innovative, ingenuitive way that God was talking to a man that had ears to hear. And he sensitized him to a science that had yet to come to be. You're not ready for me this morning. And so what's going to happen now is we're studying God's production pattern because whether you realize it or not God loves to produce he, he, he likes the, the, uh, you would, if you're looking at the book of Genesis the right way, it, half of it looks like a grocery list, I mean he's talking about shrubs and categories of, of, of animal and fields and, and all of this type of thing and so he's displaying that he is interested in producing things, he's a God that is a fruitful person, he loves growing and watching and managing and tending and mending and rooting up and he loves planting and then he gives us the principle of seed in the book of Genesis where he says uh, as long as the earth remains it's going to be seed time and there will be harvest and here's a trick about that seed when you plant an orange seed an apple tree will not go grow the, 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 a seed will only reproduce lift your hands and say after its kind open your mouth and say after its kind so the Spirit of God expresses himself in the book of Genesis in a way that we also see pace pace the Gregorian calendar is not where we get the valid expression of what a week looks like I know this is boring now but give me a minute we see God's pace he says I did this day one I did this day two I did this day three and then th this was the first day and then he says on the seventh day I'm gonna give myself some rest I'm going to teach, I'm going to give an exemplar of what it means to rest in this way. God, God, God took it one day at a time. I'm coming. He, 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 he I, I'm, I'm going to give you some mystery in a minute, but God took it one day at a time. Because destiny is, say, one day at a time. What, what's wrong with you? Say, destiny is one day at a time. Say, deliverance is one day at a time. Say dreaming is one day at a time. Say development is one day at a time. Open your mouth. Now say discipline is one day at a time. Now you notice, O'Shea, that whenever you're getting ready to grow in your discipline, your destiny, your deliverance, your dream, and all of that, here comes the serpent. Because the devil wants to ruin what you're doing one day at a time. I'll get there. So yeah, he gives us this pattern and he gives us this, this issue of how he likes to pace himself. Will you just help me preach real quick, you Anglican person, you? And slap three people and say, pace yourself. Come on, tell them, pace yourself. Come on, tell them, pace yourself. I feel God on that. Say, pace yourself. 
I know you want to get it done, but pace yourself. I know you have a point to prove, but pace yourself. I know you want to produce at the realm and the level of your potential, but you better learn how to pace yourself. Because whenever you don't pace yourself, the serpent is going to sneak in there and find a way to tire you, confuse you, control you, converse with you. Will you slap your neighbor and say, I'm taking my time. Don't rush me. I'm not trying to keep up with you, your mama, your auntie, your cousins, none of them. I'm taking my time. He shows his pace. Amen. He shows his pace. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's go into our texture today. Beginnings don't benefit God at all. There's nothing God gets out of a beginning. How does an uncreated something get celebration out of something starting? He doesn't. He's the uncreated one. He's just been here. He's existed in his heavenly abode, in his heavenly estate. So it leads me to believe that beginnings are a gift from God. I wish I had help. And, and, and beginnings are a gift from God as an expression of his concern for mankind. I'm coming real quick. You know I'm a technician. You got to wait. So beginnings are not something that God necessarily gets excited about because he is in eternity. There is no time in his world. There is no time in his realm. His seasons are expressions of his sentences. But the gift of beginnings are for the human race. I want to teach you how to have a brand new start. I want to teach you that no matter what happens to you, I can do it again. I want to teach you that no matter what the serpent says, you can start over all the time as long as... Be seated. Oh yeah, beginnings are not for God. Beginnings are not for God. Beginnings are not for God. Why do you think the book of Hebrews says Jesus Christ the same? Yesterday, today, and forevermore. I am the Lord and I change not. There's no such thing as God having a birthday. So therefore, beginnings are for the benefit of those of us who are flesh. If that is true, come on, by intelligent theological deduction... I have to also assert and assume that endings are also a gift. I'm coming there now. <laughs> because in the same way that beginnings don't move God and beginnings don't get God balloons from the angels in heaven, endings have to come to no surprise to him. He knew it would end when he began it. Glory to God. And he knew what he was about to begin when he ended it. I wish I had somebody that was ready to go to a place in their life where just like I shouted over the beginning of it, I'm going to shout over the ending of it. And just like I was happy when it started, I'm going to be happy when it stopped. Why? At the end of the day, God is God. God is God. God is. Shout hallelujah. That beginning was not for God. That ending was not for God. He was not moved either way. But they are gifts. They're gifts. Please be seated. There, 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 Serenity, are three central characters in the plot, the scheme, the landscape, the setting of, of my text. It's God. And here's what's interesting. Do you want to learn something? Are you hungry? Do you want to be fed? Yeah. Um, it is not the word Yahweh. Woo! Yahweh has similar implications as this word in the beginning, God. Uh, but this is the word Elohim. Yeah. Now, Yahweh does not show up until there's a formed nation, when there is a need for a deliverer. So Yahweh is the expression of a people, or it was how they referred to God to lead and guide them out. Elohim is a little different. When they refer to God as Elohim, it meant that you are our only concept. Uh, uh, it, 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 what Elohim says is you are God, uh, I'll get there later, among the gods. What it, what it implies is there is a spiritual realm, a spiritual reality of a lot of stuff floating around, little bugs and bees and insects. But above all of them, you are the only one that we see superior in your action, superior in your intelligence, superior in your strength, superior in your 
in your action superior, in your understanding superior, in your sight superior, in your hearing Elohim, the God above all God. So from the beginning, something about the human race knew that there were other stuff trying to be God. Because they call him the God above the gods. Let's go. So now we're delving into monotheism. Come on, let's eat good. We're delving into polytheism. And we're delving into the reality of the human soul that there's a lot of other options out there. And there are many of us, we're in the beginning just like Adam. We're not controlled by our desires alone. It's the options that's messing with us. We've not matured to the place where we can tell God, all I want is your will. And if your will don't work, just take me up out of here. Because the only safe place I am is in your will. The only place I'll be happy is in your will. The only place I've got victory, we want options. You got an A, a B, a C, a D, a 1, a 2, and a 3. But when you start living life under the throne of God, you are sovereign and I'm sold out. I wish I had 20 sellouts in here. That's your problem. COVID took your sellout. You too are afraid to sell out. But lift your hands and say, I give it all up. Come on. Open your mouth and say, I give it all up. That was the biblical understanding of Elohim. Was that there is something that exists and there's a lot of stuff out there, but I know that you're exceeded among them. You, are, you, you rule in the midst of them. So beginnings and endings are gifts from God. Say, thank you for my beginning. Say, thank you for my endings. Oh, I didn't hear you. I said, thank you for my beginnings. Come on, go with me now. Now say, thank you for my endings. Now here's what the devil loves to do, Brooke. He loves to be able to highlight the pain of the beginning. I'm coming. I'm coming. And the pain of the ending. Because although there are gifts, you don't want to be honest. Every gift of God comes with an assigned pain. Oh, I wish I had help. There is not a gift in your life that is not going to cause you some measure of pain. I don't care if it's prophecy, if it's tongues, it's going to bring a distinction in who you are, how you have to live, who you can talk to, where you can work, where you can live, who you can marry. It comes with pain. Now you won't say amen there. I'm glad we got our shout out, but there is no such thing as a purpose without an assigned pain problem is we lust over the purpose but we want to reject the pain assigned to it but it's the pain that prepares you for the pur I don't have help now it's the pain that prepares you to handle the pressures of the purpose if you don't handle the pain well that pressure is going to kill you and you can be in the right purpose and not know how to handle the pressure so the pain will kill you just cause it's a gift don't mean it don't hurt just because he gave it to you don't mean you won't suffer because of it. Just because it is an expression of his heart don't mean you ain't going to feel it in your life. And feel it in your psychosocial emotional self. And feel it in your emotions. You will feel what God gave you. You're quiet. So beginnings and endings come with two distinct types of pain. Number one, I'm coming to my text, don't rush me. Beginnings come with the pain of discomfort. This is all backdrop, baby. Beginnings come with discomfort. You will always know when you're in the beginning of something with how uncomfortable you are. Discomfort is not a middle issue. I'm working. Discomfort is not an ending issue. I'll get you there. But discomfort is always at the beginning of the thing. It's morning sickness. It's, it's I don't know how to wear this. I've changed my stature and changed my size. Now, I don't know about you, Kenza. They're going to lie. But there's a lot of us in the room that's got the victory and we're still uncomfortable. And, and we have a word from the Lord, but we're just not really comfortable. There is something. Who am I talking to? There is something about what God is doing now that's still unsettling and what people who are carnal do is use their lack of settling as an excuse for my disobedience ah, but I know God will put you in a season where he will remove your comfort from you so that you are not complacent with what he's trying to create come on baby I'm starting something new so you're going to have to reorientate your life your will your emotions your soul your relationships your money your intellect your desire your appetite. I want you uncomfortable. You won't say man and you won't stand up because you think God is 
your masseuse. You think he's your massage therapist and that his job is to burn some essential oils and make you comfortable. But my God puts his hard hand on anything that he's about to begin again. He puts his hard hand on anything that's starting over. We look at your name and say, I'm uncomfortable. Whoa. 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 Unto those of you that take your instructions from your comfort level. Whoa. Unto those of you that make your next moves because you feel uncomfortable. God is not concerned about you being comfortable. He's concerned about your foot crushing the head of the serpent. And you're going to have to choose one. I'm working in here. Or the other. So the pain of every beginning, I'm almost there, is discomfort. I'm uncomfortable. I got stretch marks. I got hunger pains. Hey, I got growing pains. I'm just uncomfortable. Now, the pain of the ending, say I hear you, is distress. Because sometimes at endings you don't have answers. Mm-hmm. Sometimes at endings, it seems like there are no conclusions or no resolve or no clarity. You, you tend to be a little more clear at the beginning than you are at the end. Because at the end, here's what the soul does. Now what? I'm in my text. Now where? Now who? Now how? The questions don't come at the beginning alone. Because at the beginning, what you have is trust, faith. You got the voice of the Lord. But at the end, you're like, now, now that this era, this epoch, this season, this trial, this, this, this area, this lane, this category is done, what am I going to do now? Who am I going to be now? Where am I going to go now? Come on, Adam. Who can I trust now? Because I trusted that heifer. She came up out of me. And now I ate something because she put some salt and pepper on it. And now I'm getting kicked out of my divine environment with an angel that's keeping me out of the past. Who do I even trust? Because now... The first murder on the world belong to the same parents do I trust my kids do I trust my wife what do I do where am I so 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 endings can be isolating uh. when something is over you're going to feel alone I'll say a lot but I know you don't understand I'm not going to waste my breath I'm not going to express this to you because I just know something over. But here is the great news. Let's shout about that. Endings precede new beginnings. This is the cycle of life in the Bible. Something begins, something ends, and then something starts over. I'll repeat. Something begins, something ends, and something starts over. Do you receive that? So this is the cycle of life. For the rest of your days, for as long as you have breath, you'll be beginning, ending, and starting over. Beginning, ending, and starting over. Now, can I bust the devil up in his jaw? Starting over don't mean that you didn't make progress. Ay, 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 ay. Starting over don't mean that it wasn't worth the tears. Starting over don't mean that your labor was in vain. Starting over don't mean that you wasted your time. You invested it. You did not waste it. And there is a good difference between investment and wasting something over. But starting over is a natural part of life cycle. It's how you grow with God. It's how you mature with God. And for the rest of your days, I'm here to tell you as God's prophet, you will be delivered today from the shame of starting over. I want to know who... You won't say man, but the truth is, if you're like Adam, and there's a little of him in all of us, you're embarrassed about starting over. Please be seated. Verse 6 shows us a very key principle about beginnings, Pastor Tien. And here is what he shows us about beginnings. The weapon of the serpent. Now, first of all, Genesis 3.1, if my memory reigns true, indulge me, says, now the serpent was more subtle. All, 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 all demonic attacks are not loud. They don't have vibrato. 
Sometimes they're just appealings, promptings, the things that scratch you, just, you know, kind of hit you in sensitive and vulnerable places. He was subtle. He was, the Bible is crafty. Yeah, I understand. And, uh, and, 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 and so what I see in verse 6 is a, a strategy trap that when we're reading this particular text, we don't really see. But what I saw there was disobedience led to deception. I'm going to repeat it. Because they did something that God told them not to do, they had one destined place to live their life, deception. And the thing with deception is nobody deceives knows they're deceived. As a matter of fact, deceived people think everybody else is deceived. And what they'll do is they'll alienate themselves on this island like they got superb discernment, superb insight, sensitivity to the spirit. And everybody's looking at them like this does not even line up with the principle of the scripture, the pattern of God, the word of God. You're rogue! But all disobedience breeds deception whenever I've de sensed that somebody is deceived I know that they disobeyed first there was an instruction come on you quiet now there was a there was a mandate there was a commandment there was a precept there was a priority that God tried to give them that they would not yield to and when they did not yield to it the devil had equal turf in that heart and what he did was deceived I'm going to make you have your eyes wide shut it's going to be so obvious to everybody that's leaning on the power of the Holy Ghost but you're going to walk around here like bozo the clown being led astray by your own lust and your own own desires and your own wishes and your own dreams and your own goals and your own agenda and your own plan for your life because the, uh, disobedience bred that in you now in the beginning say in the beginning you're gonna have the gift of instruction you know Ricky I'm so proud of you I, I just, you know Xavier I'm concerned as an apostle about how many tongue-talking, unteachable people exist. I know people that barely talk in English in church. The whole time, from the time they get to the parking lot to their seat. But they can't be taught. And I'm concerned about how you got the teacher in you and you can't be taught nothing. You always have a predisposition to your rightness. I'm working in here. Your correctness, your accuracy, and you don't want to ever be told that you're wrong. But my tongues create room for the Holy Ghost to correct, to adjust, to reduce, to persuade. Unteachable. Unteachable. And in beginnings, God is teaching. Everything about this situation with Adam was teaching. God was teaching not just Adam, but the human race. He was using Adam as a visible learning point for how you handle something called life. Because here is the thing. Foundations is great. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, new images is amazing. Oh, I miss it so bad. Y'all need an advanced version. I, I, I love the gifts of the spirit. Um, all, but nobody has a class on life. With as wonderful as Mother Stevenson is, she ain't even wrote one yet. We need a curriculum on how to live because life be life in. And life life's on people when you least expect it. It almost seems like right when you think you got it down pat. Here comes a new birthday and a new challenge. Here comes a new anniversary and a new problem. Here comes a new city and a brand new enemy. Here comes a new promotion and brand new confusion. Life be life. And so God uses Adam to teach us the cycle, the circle, the seasons of life. Amen. And in beginnings, the pattern of Elohim was I'll instruct you when I'm trying to start something with you. When I'm starting something with you, I'm going to instruct you. Say I receive. Now, verse 7 says something. First two words is all I need to be able to work before I get to my main point is they knew. This deals with the human conscious. In the beginning, there are things that are going to be changing in your consciousness, your conscious self. And the Bible says that they knew, they knew. In verse 7, it says very explicitly, and the eyes of them birth were open, and they knew they were naked. So in the beginning, as you depart from dis, uh, uh, instructions and you de depart from things that God tells you, you're going to become, are you ready for this? Be honest and just play it off. Y'all said you're like Martin, just, just laugh a little bit. You're going to be real self-conscious. 
Mm -hmm. You're going to be real insecure. You're going to be like, I don't know if I see myself the way they do or if I see myself the way he does or if I'm measuring up to what he just said to me because I know I'm naked now. I know I'm out here. I'm, I'm exposed. God Almighty. And this is a dumb, uh, forgive me, this generation of Christian loves a good exposure, don't they? We love a good exposure uh, until it's our turn. Glory be to God. We love a great exposure. But don't worry about it. If you commit to trying to expose people your turn is coming I tell you the truth and your turn is going to be worse than the one you did whoever plants a sword will fall on the they knew there was something that they started to see differently about themselves now let me give you something from experience one of the consequences of warfare is the devil will have you forgetting who you are when you go through a rough season one of the worst the first things to go is your image of yourself I'm talking to you and you won't say amen but I'm going to preach harder because you won't uh, I want to know what happened to your confidence and I want to know what happened to your esteem I want to know what happened to your bravery what happened to your courage what happened to your initiation where did that thing go I'm going to tell you where it when it went in your insecurity intimidation inferiority uh, it went in all of those areas of your soul because now you know you're naked but you were naked all the time you just didn't know it so now the knowledge of your nakedness is heightened than the knowledge of the fact that you didn't need to be covered because you were walking by God now when you're naked and you're walking with God there is no need to be ashamed and there's no need to hide and there's no need to run ah, but when you disobey there is something that is heightened in the wall of the soul that makes you more aware of you than him makes you more aware of your problems and ignore his strength makes you more aware of your weakness and not his power in you I want to know if you've been focusing on you more than you've been focusing on him I want to know if you look in the mirror and say thank you Jesus or I'm so ugly I want to know if you look in the mirror and say thank God for a new day or I really need to lose some weight I want to know how self-conscious you've gotten because you've taken your eyes off of what God told you and you're putting on your eyes on what you ain't but I don't have to be nothing that I'm not because everything I I'm not he is everything I need he's got everything I want it's in his hands snap your neighbor say shift your focus oh yeah you got to stop looking at yourself Yay, my 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 you got to stop looking at yourself you got to stop concentrating on yourself. Self-care is one thing, but self-worship is another. You got to stop looking at yourself. Ain't nothing good in there. If I keep trying to find me, all I'm gonna find is iniquity, bondage, questions, confusion, stress. What I'd rather do is look to the hills. <laughs> it's a much better view up there. From with come at my help. All of my help coming from the The way, according to verse 7, that they saw themselves changed because of disobedience that came from deception. And now they're having to adjust how they were. So here's two things that they did. This is the B clause. Can you handle just a little bit more? They created another image. I'm in my text. They had one, but now they created another. They had to create a Sunday version of who they really were. So, so, and here, here is how funny it was, EPT. That's a pretty, this is a good topic. What they did was they went somewhere and found a specific kind of fruit, a specific kind of leaf. They sold it together. Do you see the effort that this takes? I'd have just found the nearest bush and did like this, but they went and got sewing machines. I don't even know how they sold it together. I don't know what they used. I don't know the needles existed, but I, I don't know what they did. I just got to investigate a little bit. They went and they effortlessly created an image, a way they wanted to be seen. It had nothing to do with who they really were. It was how they wanted to appear. And there are people in here that's in a brand new beginning. And you're more committed to how they see you than who you really are. You're more committed to how they view you than how healed you really are. You're more commi committed to your appearance than your authentic process. One has power and the other does not. You better get your plastic tail out of here. You are a glorified, anointed, hollering, screaming mannequin. Ain't nothing about that real. You got emotions. You got feelings. You got pride. You got rebellion. You got rejection. You got problems. And that fig tree ain't covering nothing. 
I know you want me to turn my plow, but I can't do it. They went and got a good outfit. Mm. Depressed, but a nice outfit. Grieving, but a good sewing. Mad at themselves, cutting themselves. I was there, I understand. But made sure that nobody ever saw the you that you felt like you really were. So you use your life in costume, in aesthetics, in appearance. Problem now is you're sitting up somewhere, Adam, saying don't nobody love you. But you kept the real you from us. So we fell in love with the you you projected. I wish I had help. We, we fell in love with your costume. You didn't give us the opportunity to see your character. You were so busy projecting who you thought we wanted and who you thought we could love and who you thought was more palatable that you would not be yourself in the beginning. That these are all temptations for somebody starting over. These are all risks for somebody that's in a new beginning and a new start. Let me find out how to externally put this stuff on uh, to keep people from seeing I'm really not as ready as I think. And I'm really not as whole as I think. Uh, I've got some fears in the back of my mind. And I've got some trauma in my life that I'm trying to recover from. But if they see me recovering, they're going to think I'm weak. And if they see me healing, they're going to take advantage of me. So why don't I find some leaves uh, from an alternate tree uh, and cover my up. I need some prophetic people in here where you slap your neck and say blow the cover blow the cover and you don't want to say that out loud say in the name of Jesus blow the cover come on let's keep it real if you go to all nations something wrong with you already all of us crazy slap your neighbor and say blow the cover blow the cover If you blow the cover, he'll come catch you. If you blow the cover, he'll send the right crowd around you. If you blow the cover, you'll be able to cry a little harder. If you blow the cover, your offering will be received. If you blow the cover. In the beginning. I'm hurrying up. Um, they made a cover up to cover their nakedness. And there was two forms of hiding. I'm almost there. You'll get your food. Verse 7 also gives us these principles. There are different types of hiding. There are two different types of hiding, external and internal. I know, unfortunately, Tracy, some magnificent liars. I mean, great. Fully researched. Articulate because those are the worst liars, the ones that can express it. People that are not really intelligent don't lie that well. But intelligent people are brilliant at lying. Don't be creative. <laughs> you lie real good. But, 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 but lying to other people uh, 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 is not as easy as lying to yourself. And what I've learned is that most people that lie outside have already lied inside. You are a liar because you lied to you first. And, and, and when people, I feel a chill. I, I, is the air conditioner. I said most people lie because they lied to themselves first. And so what happened is this is two types of hiding. Say what? They hid externally by putting them fig trees on them or them fig leaves on them. But then they hid internally as it were because, watch me, are you ready to preach now? They were hiding but they could still hear. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. I, yeah, I got I got That's good. Great. I said they were hiding, but they could still hear. They, they, they were hiding, but they could still hear. Verse 7 says they hid externally, but they hid internally. And the way we know that they hid internally is because when God showed up on the scene, the last place he set them. Now, real quick, let's take a parenthetic pause here and ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you at the last place? God told you to be. Ask him again. Say, are you at the last place God told you to be? That neighbor is phony. Ask the other one. Say, are you at the last place God told you to be? They were hiding in plain sight, but no amount of hiding could stop what they heard. 
they were hiding in plain sight but it didn't change the volume of the voice of the Lord there was a volume and there was a range and there was a frequency that they had got it used to hearing gone because here's what you got to know about this thing when God starts talking to you on one level uh, you can act like you ain't who you are you can go back and backslide uh, you can pretend like he didn't teach you like he didn't reprimand you but nothing is going to untrain that ear I'm working in here it doesn't matter how hard you hide uh, your ear has already been trained Adam uh, we used to take this walk every day uh, so I know you know the sound of my voice uh, so no matter where you're hiding you can go under that tree uh, behind the mountain uh, you can jump in the ocean I know you're going to hear my voice uh, God's got a way uh, of making people hear him uh, even when they inhale uh, God's got a way uh, of making people hear him uh, no matter how fast they're running in the beginning no matter how you try to pretend and make believe you look at the person behind you say trick or treat Mm, 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 mm. please be seated I'm almost done Woo! let's have a time Zion uh, mobility Lindell walking movement those are not attributes that I would characterize a voice to do I attribute walking and movement and all of that stuff to feet and legs and limbs this thing called Elohim, he had a voice that walked. God, I wish I had the time. That means that a major part of the role of the voice of God in your life is to teach you how to walk. You're running, but you got to learn how to walk. I just told you I gave you one day at a time. So without my voice, you're not going to learn how to walk. The voice of the Lord came walking, looking for Adam where God left him. And the problem with your lack of next instructions is the voice of the Lord is at where he told you to be. And your little stubborn, rebellious, proud, arrogant tail then moved apart from your principle and apart from your instruction and apart from your standard. And when the voice of the Lord comes walking, you start running will you look at your name and say when he starts walking don't start running look at your name and say when he starts walking don't start running the voice of the Lord came walking glory I'm going to shout on my own time I said the voice of the Lord came walking it was his voice that came walking his voice came walking his voice came walking at the cool of the day and, and, and when his voice got there the Bible said that Adam and his wife watch me they did not hide from the voice of the Lord they hid from the presence of the Lord it's there don't believe me the voice of the Lord came walking but it was his presence they were afraid of they could hear it, they just didn't want to be accountable to it. They could sense it, they just didn't want to be surrounded by it. They didn't want to understand the personhood, the presence anymore because they were afraid. They were afraid. I want to know how many of you is God looking for? Oh, don't get caught now because you're not where he told you to be. And, uh, in what he told you to do and how he told you to act. So I received this. Uh, the Bible says that they hid themselves in the amongst the trees of the garden. Now look, it's, 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 it's interesting. I don't have the time to go there now, Sister May. But it's interesting how people hide amongst what they should be reigning over. Because we can be in the same age group and you not be my peer. We can be in the same church and I don't have to behave like you socially and classically. I cannot hide over what I'm supposed to be ruling. Them trees were beneath Adam, but he found himself trying to blend in. I command you in the name of Jesus out of the assignment of the camouflage, out of the assignment of blending in, out of the assignment of looking like, lift your hands and say yes! It's the blending that God is coming for. It's the camouflage that God is trying to burn. You can't be like them if you're supposed to reign over them. Get from out of those trees. He 
was finding company with something he was told to have dominion over. Anyway. Now, here's what happens in the beginning. You ready? I'm almost done. Now, this is simple. Forgive me, I'm so juvenile and pubescent apparently that I love the simple things of God's word. Like things like this. And the Lord God called Adam. The voice of the Lord came walking. He hid amongst the trees. And the Lord God called Adam. He called him, Prophet Justin. He called him. He called him. Naked and called him. Fig trees and called him. Full knowledge of what he did and called him. See, here's our issue. We think that God calls people based upon how clean they are. I love your word. But God calls the unclean. I wish I had 30 people... Oh, y'all don't like that. You Pharisee, you. You Sadducee, you. You hypocrite, you. You Jezebel, you. You murderer, you. You weren't clean when he called you. You weren't all the way washed when he wanted to use you. How dare you? I'm working in here. Will you encourage your neighbor? Say, he called me. Hallelujah. Say, he called me. Hey, I feel good. Say, he called me. Dirty, and he called me. Guilty, and he called me. Running, and he called me. Hiding, and he called me. Lonely, and he called me. Confused, and he called me. Frustrated, and he called me. Amongst the trees, and he called me. Mad at Eve, and he called me. Eating bad fruit, and he called me. Lift your hands and say, he called me. The Lord God called Adam. 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 Baby. 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 Oh, baby. You know I love you. Okay. Well, Rudy, come on me for a minute. Son. Hold me tight. Yeah. You know the night time oh, is the right time. Sorry, so I believe God was like Adam, 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 Adam. I think it was, I think it was called Adam like that. <laughs> Where are you? Will you look at three people and say, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm almost at, I, I, oh, do what I said. Do look at three people and say, where are you? Where are you? Come on. No, this is one of them questions, Sister Stacks, that you've got to look at somebody in their eye and say, where are you? Do it to three people. Say, where are you? Where are you? Now, I'm teaching you a principle of spiritual appraisal. Spiritual appraisal. Appraisal in the realm of the spirit. Assessment in the realm of the spirit. Location in the realm of the spirit. Mm. Because where you are not is where the devil has authority over you. you got to be honest about where you at ain't no sense in you lying about where you at do I have about 10 people in here that's tired of lying about where I'm at yeah this year is much better than last year but I'm still mad look at your neighbor and say where are you we are afraid of spiritual appraisal. That's why we don't like apostles. We are afraid of spiritual location. That's why we kill them prophets. Because they are searching gifts and seeing gifts to locate where you are in your maturity, in your understanding, in your obedience, in your discipline, in your growth, in your rate of obedience. Where are you? Where are you? Ain't no sense in your line. At the beginning, there's going to be a need for a spiritual appraisal, mm. an evaluation, an assessment, a measurement of where you really are. This is our goal. This is where we're at. This is where he's taking us. This is how far we've come. This is where we left, but this is where we need to go. And you are afraid to measure yourself because everybody's been beating you up. The serpent came and tried to reduce you, so now you don't want to answer the honest question about where you are. And in the beginning, you're going to have to acknowledge where I'm really at. I'm here, but I ain't there. I'm here, but I, I used to be there. You're going to have to be honest and praise God for where you at. Give me 10 seconds of a shout because I'm nowhere near where I'm supposed to be. Just 10 seconds, come on. Oh, oh, just 10 seconds, come on. I thank God for where I'm at. I thank God.
thank God for where I'm at. I want to go somewhere, but I thank God for where I'm at. Where I'm at is much better than where I used to be. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Have a seat. Oh, bless his name. Come on, sit down. Spiritual appraisal. Spiritual assessment. These are all beginning tendencies and phenomena. And spiritual location. Here is my um, message. Please be seated. I heard, and once I heard, three things happened within me. Because this is a beginning scenario, you are faithful to talk. So I heard, but then I responded habitually. Habitually. I responded intuitively. I responded before I knew it in three ways. Number one, I was afraid. Can we be honest for a minute? In your life, when you're about to hit a beginning, you're going to hit a new fear. I'm going over here. A sign that God is about to do something new is that you're going to be scared of something new. Your old fears will weaken. Hey, Lynn, Lynn and, and, and new fears will be like, what's up, girl? We've been over here waiting on you. What's up, bud? Do you really think you can do this? I mean, fears I ain't never feared before. But we focus on the fear and not necessarily the fact that we just heard. And the reason we have the new fear is because of what we just heard. But when you pay attention to what you heard, you won't be intimidated by what you fear. I was afraid. I don't have the time. I've been dealing with the monster of fear for two weeks now in the spirit. And I've been teaching against it because I hate it. A passionate, furious hatred. Mm. I was afraid. And then I was naked. I was self-conscious. Didn't like how I looked. Didn't like how this would come across. It's a new beginning, and so I don't even know what's appropriate attire for this assignment. Go away. So I didn't like how I looked. I was naked. I, I, I was afraid, and I was naked. And then after I was naked, what ended up happening is I ended up hiding in plain sight. We just look at your name and say, Peekaboo, we see you. I was afraid, I was naked, and then I hid. <clears throat> Here's my message. Thank you for being so patient. Who? Huh? I think God got a little bit of edge in him, and you know, if I'm made in his image and likeness, he got to, you know, got to be a little peppery at time. <laughs> Who told you? Have you ever heard a story about yourself from a stranger that was so confident? It used to annoy the crap out of me. Now I just laugh at it. You know, when I was uh, uh, several years ago, folk would always too, could come up to me and be like, oh, I changed your diaper because I remember you running around crusaders. And I'm like, that's crazy. Because I was the whole 22 before I ever visited that church. I don't know what you're talking about, ma'am. That was not me. Oh, yeah, I used to, mama used to bring me to my lap. I said, my mama didn't go here. She didn't know. But folk will be so confident in things that they heard or things that they were told about you, and they will establish a strength in it. I already know. I already know. I already know. I already know. So God looked at Adam like, who told you that you were naked? Because you should never embrace an identity that didn't come from what I said. I wish I, I just need 10. If I didn't say it, you ain't it. You should never embrace, adapt, or become and morph and mutate into something somebody else told you. You let hell put that on you. You let hell convince you of that. I did not say that. Who? I believe the spirit of God is ringing out in this room asking, who told you that? Who told you you had to be married first? Who told you you had to get that many degrees first? Who told you you couldn't do this with or without friends? Who told you that this was not a, 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 a fruitful place for you? Who? Who told you that and what convinces you can confirm you you will be conformed by whatever can convince you 
So God asked him, who told you that? Because that doesn't sound like a language I put in you. That's not a vocabulary I put in you. That's not a, 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 an identity I formed in you. So who told you that? Let's do an exercise. I wonder how much you have or not in your life. In this beginning phase, because you listened to the wrong thing from the wrong source. And if it wasn't Satan himself, it was one of his tacticians, one of his task force agents. Who told you that? Why do you believe what you believe and why are you so rooted in it? And you have to realize that in anything, in new beginnings and in fresh starts, you're going to have to do mental evaluation, uh, emotional real estate landscape surveys about who told you what and why you're so confident in it. All right. So this is the way it works. Find your fear. Ooh, them mouses are shouting on cotton downstairs, boy. <laughs> Find the fears. Find the fears, and then you'll be able to trace the fears to the voice that told you. And you'll notice that most of the stuff you're afraid of, ain't none of it come from heaven. It may have come from people, places, pain, fear, experiences. Wherever it came from, it didn't come from, from heaven. And so if you find that, you'll realize that, number one, the good news is you're probably in the season of a new beginning. But the bad news is, is the fear can ruin a new beginning. It can make you apprehensive, insecure. It can make you feel inferior, incompetent, not prepared enough. It can do all of that, but find the fear. And, 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 and ask yourself, who really told me this? Sometimes, you know, my new favorite thing to do is have devotion in the mirror. I know you think it's vain. I know I'm cute. I don't need your confirmation. So, uh, uh, humbly speaking. So, but, but what I like to do <laughs> is, is, is look in the mirror and talk to God. I like to be like, what do you see in him? What are you doing with this guy? How much time are you giving him to obey? What gifts are not being used? I like to do that. It's, it's, you know, David encouraged himself in that particular way. Now, closing your eyes is good. Bowing, you know, nobody loves to bow more than me. But sometimes I like to talk to who God is talking to. Now, if you think I flow in the gifts of the Spirit to you, you should be a fly on the wall when I'm prophesying to me. <laughs> it's hilarious. Because I end up ministering to myself about the secrets of my own heart and it takes the Holy Ghost to do it. Oh, that's in there. Okay, God. It's called evaluating and examining yourself in a new beginning. Now, most of you in the room are in part of, or a part of a powerful new beginning. It's a powerful new beginning. And some of you might also be in like somewhere in between a, a harsh. <laughs> Elder James, put her on the security list. <laughs> somewhere in between a harsh stop and a brand new start. But here's what I know about God. He's not going to stop it without telling you where to go next. He's going to give you instructions on what the next looks like. But your next is now as long as you are willing to go through what it takes to start over and what it takes to go over. When you reach 20, it will be a new beginning. When you reach 30, it will be a new beginning. When you reach 40, it will be. There was a season around my office where everybody was just turning 30 and it seemed like there was an emotional massacre all the way around. I had no clue what was going on around me. I'm like, okay, who's sleeping with who? Who's doing what? Y'all, what happened? You stole money. You robbed a bank. I thought you was just leading prayer. It's, 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 it, I'm, I'm just so confused. But, but there's, there's a level of self-discovery that comes with different phases of life. This is why I don't think people should preach if they don't understand sociolo sociology or psychology. You got to understand how people think in order to minister to them. Um, and if, at 40, you're going to hit another level of discovery, both of God and yourself. And I also believe that God times, hey there, I think that God times the levels of himself he reveals to you in your season of life. So I think there are certain things you won't even understand about God until he's ready to show it to you. Moses didn't see everything about God in that burning bush. Some stuff he had to see in the mountain. Some stuff he, ha he had to see right before he died. He didn't cause his hind parts to be seen by Moses at the bush. That came later. And so you just have to be able to see your life in panoramic view. We just grab your neighbor's hand real quick and say, think long term with God. Look at somebody else say, think long term with God. It is okay to have dream boards. Yay! It's really pretty, isn't it? It's okay to have goals and it's okay to have plans. But it's most important to be sensitive to God's purposes. That means that you're going to have to endure, Lindo. 
you're going to have to endure disappointment as a part of life. It will not always work out the way you want it to, but that's a part of life. So you have to get used, and this is something I'm still growing in, learning how to end to begin, end to begin, end to begin. Don't, memories are great, but not if it's a nostalgic snare. Don't ever get held back by a season that has come and gone so much so that you can't move forward. Let it go. Let them go. Let that go. The idea, the view, the comfort of it all. And here's the deal. I tell her all the time, if something happened and she decided to go be with Mahalia and Aretha and all them, I'm not, I'm not getting back on a dating scene. It takes a lot to have somebody relearn you in that way. I, I'm horrified of that. I don't nobody want to spend time trying to re-explain stuff that you already know. It's, boy, it's, it's just it's stressful. It's, it's crazy out here. You need a psychological evaluation before I go out on a date with you. Amen. Um, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. But uh, 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 you got to think long term with God so that you don't rush into things that you're not prepared for. Now, what can try to intimidate you? Your age, your peers, um, status, uh, statistics, your city, culture, all of it. It's really discouraging. I'm going to tell you what some of you need to do and get free from. You need to ask the Lord to deliver your thumb. So the first thing you do in the morning is get to scrolling. And you got consistent updates of everybody's successes, everybody's love life. And most of it is fake anyway. It's just a show for you to begin with. I mean, we're in a wicked generation. Honey, they buying followers. You understand me? And uh, so, 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 so you got to stop doing that because all you've done is you've given yourself a rubric whereby to judge your successes, your wins, your victories. And that stuff ain't your progress. Maybe you don't have a blue check, but you got a real check. Maybe you didn't get engaged. Maybe you're looking at them like, I look much better than her, but who knows if that's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Y'all laughing. I'm dead serious. I've known people with beautiful weddings and horrible marriages. I mean, just floating down the aisle like an angel. So proud of themselves in God. You're just so proud of God, ain't you? Got home and got the stew beat out of them. Got to, got to spend their lives looking through. I'm not, I don't want to be a part of no relationship where I got to go through your phone. Chill, chill, chill in here. But we ain't got trust. I ain't sleeping with nobody I got to go through their phone for. If I got questions about your phone, I should have questions about your privates. I'm going to pull out of there. I, I, I feel like I'm uh, Y'all like that? Gotcha! Sir. Ma'am. Is everybody okay? In the beginning, strange phenomena happens. I'm going to give you some more over the next several weeks. But you got to pay attention to what God is doing when he's starting something. He loves to do it. It's a part of his art, artistic, eternal process. It's how his will is made manifest. He'll just do it and do it and do it. For example, why do you think we have phrases like from generation to generation? From everlasting to everlasting. Why do you think we have phrases like world without end or from before the foundations of the earth? It's because God likes to think in terms of when I start, I'm going to start again. And it's one of the ways we should worship him or why we should worship him. Because even if it's ending, it'll start over. And even if it's going to begin, it's going to end. And here's what he gives us. He gives us promises that says better is the end of a thing. Even than the beginning thereof. So there's no reason to mourn either. Shout at the beginning. Shout at the end. Shout at the end. And shout at the beginning. So what? It did not work how you want it. Get up. And obey. Now, God is so God, I'll get there probably later. He was so committed to Adam's development that he refused to allow Adam to go back in a pretty place. Because the Bible never says that he ruined Eden. He just locked it out of it. It was a pretty place, but he didn't want Adam to go back. Will you just look at your name and encourage him and say, don't go back. Come on. 
Look at somebody else say, don't go back. Say, don't go back. Come on, tell them, don't go back. Don't go back. It's very important not to go back. It's vitally important for you. Will you stand in the pink shirt, please? Lift your hands. God's coming to find you today. It's been almost two years since you've walked away of from principle and departed oh the instruction of the Lord for your life and you were making progress until a wolf came a church wolf and for sake of nobody believing your version of the inboxes the approaches even the blackmailing. You just decided to give up on the whole thing altogether. And then there were attempts that failed in your life to escape anybody that would knew, know or figure out anything around you, about you, and you gave up your try. Something has changed, though, as of March of this year. Uh -huh. Something changed where God got your attention because there's a, the word mayor. It, uh, uh, it's... it's, it's, it's um, it's a biblical phrase. When we say nightmare, it, it, it implies something that wants to stop you from breathing at night. There's a pressure on your life that manifests in the form of nightmare. God today is trying to set your mind free from consistent years of grief, sickness, 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 and disease. If you will follow the Lord and trust him wholly, you will see your days fulfilled. Sometimes God sets us in families that are not necessarily capacitated to handle our desires or where we feel like God is taking us or going. And so you end up spending your life feeling estranged from them. The Spirit of God wants you to know that even though it's been the loneliest season of your life and probably the most depressing season you've seen since your early 20s, God wants you to know you don't have to stay asleep here. You can rise. Father, this is your son. I know what that uncle did and said, but this is your son. This is your son. This is your son. Will you pull him, drag him with your love into a place of life? into a place of liberty just receive and do this thing in his body in the name of Jesus I speak to every cell in his body and I command total and complete alignment to him in the name of Jesus who is God's Christ in the name of Jesus there you go in the name of Jesus who is God's Christ I bless you for that come on put those hands together for the Lord will you you can do better than that put those hands together for the Lord will you Put those hands together for Jesus, will you? Sir, in the shirt here, will you stand? Yeah. You're waiting for some very critical instructions from the Lord. Very time-sensitive instruction from God. And uh, the Lord sent you here, specifically in this service and in this day, to validate and to verify what your next steps need to look like. It's, it's not God's will for you to be stuck here. God's got a moving plan and a movement plan for you. But you're going to have to undergo the very strong probability that it will not be applauded initially. It's going to seem irrational, illogical, and you've been mulling over it for months now. But now God is speaking to you very clearly about the things that you need to do next. And as you do this, there will be an, a, 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 an effectual door open to you. And this door is going to allow for the income that you need to uh, um, bring to pass and to birth the innovative thing that is in you to do and be. God's proud of your effort, the things you write out, the things you plan. He's, he's proud of your try. But there's a change, a sudden change coming even in, in what you know to be your ministry. 
and what you know to be your ministry gifting and calling. You've been taking your time in such a way where you wanted to be methodical and you wanted to be cautious about not mishandling lives. But the Spirit of God says to tell you the season is changing now where the need is going to pull you out of complacency and the cry is going to pull you out of the corners that men, intimidated men, have actually pushed you into. And he's going to pull you out of certain denominational constructs that suppress I'll pull out of there. But uh, denominational constructs that suppress the thing that is really in you and have no language and no verbiage for what God has been showing you and teaching you. I see that you've been having word habitations, word visitations, like your hunger for the word of God and God's been explaining and exploring things with you almost like a father to his son. And what it's done is it's made you bored with what you're used to sitting under. But there is a system of impartation ordained for you because of what you're supposed to do next. Ready yourself and gird your loins. 2024, you're going to outrun the chariots. That's the word of the Lord. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord, will you? Come on, put those hands together for Jesus, will you? Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My man in the the uh, bomber jacket, will you stand? You, who are you here with? Stand up. You just come here. Blessed Redeemer. Grab hands real quick. You've got a, um, you've got a, the type of mind that God has given you. Um, it's a beautiful mind. The way you see life, it's it's almost poetic. Um, your outlook on on life and art and politics and love and relationship. You always have the alternate view. And for years, people have tried to make you feel like that's a sign of lunacy like you're crazy like you're out of your mind and it's gotten so overwhelming to you lately because all you've been doing since you were about 12 is wanting someone to understand wanting to be able to have yourself be expressed without being shoved into a corner oh oh or even in your past even having it suggested that you be shipped away and so now for the first time in your life, you're coming into environments where you feel like you're not the only one like yourself. And, and it's difficult for you to trust love. And the reason it's difficult for you to trust love is because you've not seen it demonstrated happily and healthily. You've seen women cheat. You've seen men cheat. You've not even seen long-standing family relationships grow in the directive of health. And then since 2020, it seems like every opportunity that comes before you is flirting. It, it, it's like it shows up and then it's snatched out of your hand. And it gets so frustrating at times that the, the feeling of depression is so overwhelming that you have untraceable thoughts in and out of your mind. But God's got great purpose for you. By April of next year, the Spirit of Grace is going to do something uh, in your life and in your world if you will fully commit to living for Him. He's asking for complete surrender. No, it's... It, I hate to say this, but I, what I sense from the Holy Spirit is cold turkey. There are things that you just got to stop instantly because he's got massive plans for you. And the plans that he has for you is going to mandate you seeing other parts of the world, other places around the world. It's not just going to be down south or it's not just going to be other parts of the Midwest. I'm talking about traveling to other countries to see and broaden your perspective about what God had planned for you when you were in your mother's womb. Now rejection, lift your hands, in vitro rejection. Ooh, I wish I had intercessors. I said in vitro rejection. In v Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, will you? You spirit of premature death. You take your hands off of his esophagus. Ho! 
No bronchitis. Ho, 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 ho. Ah. He will live out the purpose of God. He will live out the purpose of God. I hear that wheezing in the spirit. Devil, you're not going to take him out of here with no asthma, no bronchial issues, no breathing problems. You will not have him. In the name, come on, lift up the volume now. It's time to go. Something stirring in here. Lift your hands and worship. Lift your hands and worship him. your wonderful name we bless your powerful name come here man the Lord told me to tell you great peace have they that love his law and nothing will offend them lift your hands man you're suffering from a powerful spirit of offense the enemy has your heart locked and it's got your life from under the spout of the favor that God really wants from you. There is a kind of favor, a kind of blessing that God wants from you. But because people have held you hostage to an old you, held you hostage to a public mistake. God Almighty. Something that the enemy used to shame you. It's kept you out of what you know you need to be doing. But I hear the cry of a generation, man. And um, you've been saying out of your mouth, I'll never go back to that me. I'm not doing that stuff no more. I'm, I'm virtual. That's what I heard you say. But the Holy Spirit is calling you so strong out of a place of complacency and fear. Out of a, out of a, a plantation that punishes people for brokenness into a place of healing and redemption and restoration in the name of Jesus. I see that there was a season in your life where you would be speaking with tongues and you would know what's going on and you would be having experiences with angels and then demons would show up and you would know things about people and it would make you feel like you were losing your mind. Fire on you now again, 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 began, again, began, again, began, again, be uh I will, come on, let, let's let's put this sound in here. Begin again, begin again. There is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation, no condemnation, no, no, no hey, 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 no condemnation, no condemnation. Will you let just shout as hard as you can? 
Uh. But, but your need has come up before the throne of God. And although it had seemed as if it would never get met, not internally or provisionally, and that you would cave and perhaps just recreate life in an area where nobody knew you, where nobody had the backstory, glory to God, and where nobody would believe her side. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, that nobody would be able to be convinced about the man you really are. I understand. And, and that your integrity would no longer be scathed because by all means, you're tired of the process, the paperwork, the battle. You don't want your life complicated any more than what it is. You've already grown accustomed to women tearing you down verbally, both professionally and relationally. And it's made you reduced as a man and you don't want to ever again be called what you were called. Receive, man. Receive. That, that there's a broken place in your esteem as a man that's been hit. It's been bit. And it's actually pushed you into a place of extraordinary hesitation, apprehension, where there are talents and gifts that you refuse to move on because you were convinced that you were weak and you were convinced that you could never come out of the, the rut and I see where there's a spirit trying to make you run disappear now you're not where you were because where you used to be in your mind is just die, they won't miss you I lose healing to you totally completely in every area of your life. He sees your secret struggle. He sees your heart, your tears, your, your pillow being wet. He sees it. He understands that, that there, there, there are things that he's promised that you've not seen yet. That there are places that you have to go in life. And it does not matter. Oh yeah, being a grandmama's boy is something special, isn't it? I know I was one. But God's going to send you nurturers in your life. And those that speak into your life and your future in only a way that he can. Will you stretch off your hand and just pray right now? I command life in every area of your life where death used to be, where death used to reign, where death has claimed you, where discouragement, distress, dis depression, disaster has claimed you. I command complete healing to you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord, will you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless the powerful name of Jesus. Miss Pink, yeah. Is this husband? This husband? No. Fiance? Well, you can come, fiance. Hi. Ooh. It's given for just, you can grab hands, it's okay. It's given for laymen, y'all. What's your name? Thank you for Tanisha, Lord, and I thank you that although it had seemed as if she had put her life on hold, her company on hold, her vision on hold, the LLC was not for the right time, and the, the vision needed to be put on layaway, and it had seemed that she had thought that she could never be covered because of her strength, her intelligence, her passion. Thank you that this is the season of garbing her and crowning her and robing her. The Lord wants you to brace yourself. You're about to have like whiplash. Things are about to move very swiftly for you. And it's going to be as if that all the things that you feel like were not moving in one season, it's going to get up and move real fast. And it's going to be very difficult to manage. But here's what I see the Lord doing for you. It's going to be the right team for the right dream. Your problem is is you try to do the right thing with the wrong team. And, but now God is summonsing strangers to do what family members and friends could not do. The Lord warns you to never again try to do business with family. As a warning, there's going to be situations, hiring specifically, and I, there's, there's a grant pending for you right now. 
God's going to cause it to come into your hands very swiftly, and you will find yourself living the thing that you, that you dream out. Um, it's given, uh, what, uh, what's my sister's name? Tabitha. It's given like the, the people that you are inspired by that you're going to start seeing yourself right in that way and plan in that way and teach in that way. You will never again, sat, okay, this go round. The Holy Spirit says to tell you, you won't have to sacrifice who you are for where he's calling you to go. But there is a requirement of God, a twofold requirement. Number one, you've got to come all the way out of grief. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. It's something that messes with you on again and off again. And there's nothing wrong with you physically. It's just that sometimes the devil tries to mess with your head to discourage you from vision. Come out of grief, but you also got to recommit to your call. Church people did a job on you. I'm outright looking at it. I mean, your zeal went down the trash. You were willing to armor bearer and you were willing to pray and you were willing to serve. You were willing to show up and clean if needed be. But what happened was there was a lie. Lord have mercy. There was a lie about a woman and her husband and from a woman and her husband. From an intimidated situation about you and your character and you shut down. You're just not getting your fire back. And God wants you to continue to ignite that fire and grow and groom in the place of prayer. You will be like Abraham and it will be that you set new paths. I see dozens of men. I don't know if these are natural sons, but I see men out of you and I see your fatherhood being anointed by God. And that uh, whatever the thing is that tries to make you feel like you can't uh, uh, catch up to lost time. That's what I heard. God's going to make sure that you have your time redeemed. You won't have to make up for it. The Spirit of God is going to restore every broken relationship with those that need your mouth. Whatever you do, don't shut up. You must talk. There's, there, there are some storms coming to your side of the family. The Holy Ghost showed me hardship. And you're going to find that you won't be able to physically get them out of this one. But you're going to be able to give them the Word of God as was planted in them. And you will see your calling manifested. And there will come a day where they call you pastor. I, I don't, I, I, I think this is inside of a house, but they, they're going to call you a shepherd. That you, you will have the, the rod and the staff and you will have a discipleship oil upon you that's powerfully strong. And it will come out of you at, at, at auto body shops. And it will come out of you uh, uh, in malls. And it will come out of you while going back and on the phone. It will just, it's, it's going to ooze out of you. This is about a mandate. And this one, for whatever reason, the Lord keeps talking to me, to both of y'all about twos. The, the Lord says to tell you this go round, you'll be able to share your heart and you won't have to hide. Amen. Let it be so over this that you blow and breathe on them because they desire to please you in Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord all over this building. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy, isn't it? I said, bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy, isn't it? Come here, hon. Um, God is, uh, I, I see a, 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 um, a very radical, brutal, difficult deliverance coming to you. It's going to be hard. Um, because as you heal, just lift your hands, the people that you really think love you are going to gradually walk away. And they're going to walk away because your need for them was an area of brokenness. And they've attached themselves to you in that place. Now what's going to happen is as you continue to discover what God wants out of you in this season, because this is life or death right now, okay? As God does what he's doing in you now, from now, even until the end of the year, you're going to question who's who. It will be the season of divine questioning for you. You're going to wonder why he did that and why she did this. You're going to wonder... Even amongst like associates and like work colleagues, it's going to be a lot of questioning about who to trust. But God is putting you in a season of few words.
going to move into some observations now for the Lord to lead you into the clarity that you need. Prepare yourself, embrace yourself. I don't know where you live, but Chicago ain't going to always be home. Something's going to happen in the future where you're going to have to move into an area, a geographical area that's going to make your career flourish. Okay, it will be so. Prepare yourself now. Your affairs belong to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you did not let that wolf have her. Oh, no, honey, there's nothing to be ashamed of about that loss. It came out on top. And uh, I see a very oppressive, a very manipulative, a very immature thing trying to make you responsible for it because by nature you're a leader and you understand uh, 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 how to do things in the cabinet. The executive order is where you flow and where you function. The devil wants to send a leech to you. But because of your desire to be loved beyond what you do, you almost gave in to it. Congratulations, sweetheart. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say. Congratulations, honey. I wish I had a sister that knew what that felt like. Come on, give the Lord the praise, will you? Oh, I don't hear you. Give him the glory, will you? Hallelujah. But I will, I think this is the last one, I think. But I will empower my prophets to own things. And I will do something in the earth in these days, saith the Lord. Well, I will bring my prophets out of wells and caves and ghettos and I will give them estates and I will give them places to stay and places to house and places to teach and, and I will grant unto them the favor of the suffering of the seer. You will understand what it is in your day to know what it is to move in great ownership easily and successfully and the spirit of the Lord says don't worry about your parents they are in my hands now I've already healed, I've already restored. There will be no uh, dementia, oh no there will be no no, no mental, no, uh, what do I see? I see Alzheimer. There will be no signs and symptoms of that because you prostrated yourself in prophetic purpose. I will bring to pass my promises for your life and I will begin by putting keys in your hand, 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 keys in your hand. Keys in your hand. Behold, my prophets will not be homeless in the earth, but I will give them keys in their hands said the spirit of God oh I wish I had somebody to shout with me I said I wish I had somebody to shout with me come on who told you that I said I wish I had somebody shout with me lift your hands will you Oh, his presence. Come on, just lift your hands there. Father, thank you for your way and your word, your will being made manifest in the midst of us. Thank you, O oh God, for your word that walks, for your love that covers, for your hand and your heart that heals. We give you glory that we don't have to believe the narrative of the wicked one concerning us. But that we can be led by your love and your care and your careful hand in our direction. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace, blessings, power, prosperity. Over everyone under the sound of my voice now. Let it be so in their lives that they know what it is to be led by the love of God. I just lose clarity to you right now that the weapon of confusion and ambiguity and discombobulation will not bring you out of God's pace and rhythm for you, but that you are moving in a new day-by-day -day clarity. Uh, 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 Cal, Cal um, uh, what is his name? Yellowhead, I, I'm sorry, Cameron. The 
Lord is calling you to like 20 days of fasting and prayer. He's calling you to a consecration where he's going to start to show you some secret stuff about himself. And he's going to change some things about you that will not be reversed. It will be the irreversible act of God in your life and in your heart, in your soul. And the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to put a lock like a guard on your ear and a guard on your eye. The devil knows your weak spot and he knows the code to your affections. And so he's been trying you real aggressively over the last month. But it's not going to work because God's got a new destiny sprouting in you. A brand new purpose is getting ready to be seen to you. But you've got to see yourself as he does. There has been a smoke and mirrors assignment against you where you've not seen yourself right. And because you've not seen yourself in the lens of destiny, the enemy has been able to keep you stuck in one level of the knowledge of God. But now you're about to move into a deep intimacy. There's going to be a deep intimacy that you experience from God. And though you had been like a man of few words, there's a spout coming out of you in prayer now. As you bow to talk to God, the fountain of your deep is going to break open. You're going to find yourself remembering things that you thought you forgot, confessing things that crushed you, talking about things that hurt you. You're going to talk about your frustrations with school and your frustrations with work and your frustrations with not knowing where to go. And the Lord says, thank you. Wait, hold on. I see the 404. Lift your hands, man. 678 or 404. Something was trying to call you to Georgia. Devil, you a lie. <laughs> Hey, a whole lot, a whole lot. Not so, not Duluth. Glory to God. Not Atlanta. Not, -uh, not any area that you're not going. The Holy Ghost is, is preventing you from the trap of the wicked one. You will find success right where you are in obedience. You will find consistency. Oh, right where you are. You will find not an apartment, but a condo right where you are in obedience. It will be so that your homeless days are over. Your borrowing days are over. Your days of hoboing and rotating and going from place. It's over. God's about to set you. And I hear the scripture word established. He's going to establish you as you put yourself in the wisdom of God. Father, set him on fire. Set him on fire. Set him on fire. What is this? Is there a seer in there? I didn't know. Lord, open up now. Visions, 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 visions. No, visions. Hey, hey, visions. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. We'll I'm going to dismiss you. How many of you were blessed by this?